numerical methods iteration. Many equations cannot be solved using your conventional algebraic methods, so a numerical method has to be used instead. And a numerical method is um, uh, more like trial and improvement. You try a method, perhaps it works, perhaps it doesn't. If it doesn't, you try something else. And many numerical methods rely on uh, a series of approximations towards the solution. This equation here 2 to the power of x is equal to x cubed is an example of an equation that you cannot solve using your algebraic methods. So we're going to solve this using a numerical method. We'll start off by um, uh, looking at the graph of y is equal to 2 to the power of x and y is equal to x cubed. We'll show both graphs together and then we can see at which point they intersect, which will be the solution to this equation. Here is the solution to the equation. So the two graphs intersect here. So we know the solution is there. It's between x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 2. And we could use the uh, sign change method just to prove that the solution lies between x equals 1 and x equals 2. I'm going to use the sign change method here just to um, uh, prove that the root is between x equals 1 and x is equal to 2. So the equation here must be equal to 0, so 2x minus x cubed is equal to 0. You always need the equation to be equal to 0 to use the sign change method and I'm now going to substitute in x equals 1 and then I'm going to substitute in x equals 2 so 2 minus 1 gives you 1 and 4 minus 8 gives you minus 4 sign change positive value negative value and if there's a sign change that means there is a root in between these two x values to work out an approximate solution to this equation we need something called an iteration formula an iteration formula comes from rearranging an equation into the form x is equal to some function of x. For this equation here I'm going to make the x here the subject of this equation. So I'm going to rearrange this equation so I end up with this x being equal to everything else, whatever's on the other side. So to start with, to get the x by itself, I need to get rid of that power of 3. So if I take a cube root on each side, or raise both sides to a power of 1 third, so then I've got this. So there's the 2 to the power of x. Here's my x cubed. So I'm going to do this to both sides. Raise both sides to power of one-third. And then we know from this that you multiply these powers, the power on power rule for indices. So on the right hand side we have x and on the left hand side we've got 2 to the power of x over 3 because we're multiplying these. And then I can rewrite this as x is equal to 2 to the power of x over 3. Can you see the similarities now between this and this? This is our aim, to rewrite our equation in the form x is equal to some function of x. That's exactly what we have here. There are other ways of rearranging the equation here into the form x is equal to some function of x. I could have made this x here the subject of the equation. 
Now there's one last step left before I generate my iteration formula. And that involves doing this. On the side where you have x, write that as x n plus 1, and on the side where you've got the remaining terms for n. So now we have x n plus 1 is equal to some function of x n. So this is my iteration formula. This is what I'm going to use to attempt to find a solution to this equation. Now it's possible that when I use this to work out a solution to this equation the method completely fails. I don't find any solutions. Um, this is possible because these are just numerical methods and when you're working with numerical methods you're never quite sure which one's going to work. So if one doesn't work you try another one, a, di a different approach. To use an iteration formula you need a starting value, a suitable starting value. Now we know that we had a sign change between x equals 1 and x equals 2. So these values here would be suitable starting values. Any one of these would be a suitable starting value. So I'm going to use x is equal to 1. So this value goes into here. So x equals 1 replaces this. So then you've got 2 to the power of 1 over 3, so 2 to the power of a third, and the solution becomes this. And then this value you feed back into here, and then you do 2 to the power of whatever that was over 3, and that becomes this value here, and then that goes back in here. As you can see, you're looping round and round here. And you may slowly work towards the solution of this equation. It might work. This is a numerical method, so there's a chance that instead of converging towards the solution, you find something that diverges away from the solution, and you get nothing. In that case, you can try a different starting value, or perhaps a different iteration formula. So using your calculator, our starting value is 1, so put 1 into the calculator and press equals. This is now stored in the answer function. Then do this side, so 2 to the power of 2 to the power of. The xn is the value stored in the answer function over 3. Press equals. Record the value from your calculator, so that's the second value of x. So the first value was our starting value, the second value is what we've got from the calculator, and then press equals again. Again, record the value, press equals again, and again, and again. and again and again etc. As you can see these values are approximate solutions to this equation and this is showing that these approximate solutions are converging towards the actual solution of the equation here. So we're getting approximate solutions to this and every time we press equals on the calculator it works out the next value in the series of solutions and these are all approximations but we're going towards, we're converging towards the actual solution of uh, this equation. Typically for most um, uh, exam questions uh, you won't need this many steps what you'll find is they typically say work out the solution correct to 
uh, two decimal places, for instance. And to round something correct to two decimal places, or accurately to two decimal places, you need to find that the third decimal place is uh, quite stable. So we can see from these approximate solutions here that you could round the solution to our equation to two decimal places and it would be 1.37. Yeah, we, we would be rounding down, that's a two, that's a three, you're going to round down. So 1.37 to two decimal places. If I just press equals a few more times on uh, the calculator here, you can see that the solution is improving. And I'm pressing equals now and there seems to be no further change to the calculator's display. That's not the exact value, this is just a limitation of uh, the calculator. It can't show me any more um, uh, significant figures there. So this, if I store that, I've stored that in memory A on the calculator, I'm going to use this to show you now that this is an approximate solution to the equation that we started with. Okay, so this is our original equation and the solution to this I've stored here. So let's try 2 to the power of x. So 2 to the power of and I've stored the solution in memory A and that gives this 2.59 something. Let's try the same thing now with x cubed. So the same value of x again from memory A cubed equals and as you can see 2 to the power of x gives you this value and x to the power of 3 gives you this value. So we have a very good solution to this equation. I'm now going to repeat this whole process again but with a different starting value. Okay, so let's say my starting value is a negative number, let's say minus 5. So I put minus 5, that's now in the answer function. So 2 to the power of, and that's the answer function there, xn represents the answer function over 3. And if I just press equals a few times there, so this is still converging towards the actual solution. How about instead of minus 5, I start with the 10. So 10, press equals, so that's now in the answer function. 2 to the power of answer function over 3, pressing equals once. So that's higher than the value that I started with, which was 10. I'm just pressing equals again and again, and as you can see, this time we are not converging towards the solution, this is clearly diverging and that value was so high the calculator has given a math error. So the starting value uh, is important and using things like the sign change method or looking at graphs first to get an approximate um, ballpark figure for what the starting value should be is a sensible approach. Starting with 2 to the power of x is equal to x cubed again but this time making the x here the subject. So taking logs on each side. So I want to keep this by itself, so I'm going to divide by log 2. Like this. So now I've got x is equal to some function of x. There's the x there. And there's some function of x on this side. And then rewriting this in its iteration form. We can now use this to see if there are any other solutions to this equation. I'm going to start this time with uh, my initial value, x equals 2. 
So put 2 into the calculator, press the equals key. So 2 is now stored in the answer function. So if I put the right hand side here of this equation into the calculator, so fractions 3 log and the xn there represents the answer function on the calculator over log 2 and then I'm not going to write these down, this will take quite a while to write down, but if I keep pressing equals it looks as though it's diverging but then we're around 9.9 .9. there appears to be a second solution to our equation I'll keep pressing equals so that value there appears to be the second solution to our equation. So I'm going to store that. I've stored that in memory A. And let's test to see if it works. So the equation was 2 to the power of x is equal to x cubed. So let's try 2 to the power of the value that we've just worked out. It was about 981.9 something. And then if I try our value to the power of 3, 981.9 something. Again, as you can see, there are two solutions to the equation. And I will show you now graphically from Autograph where this second solution is. Okay, So there's a second solution around x equals 9.9. .9. Now this solution is something that only this rearrangement of the equation has given us, and the previous arrangement didn't give us this solution. So this is the graph that we had a look at at the beginning. I'm going to change the scale along here so that we can see the second solution around x equals 9. So this was our solution from the iteration process around 9 to 10. So here's the graph. I've changed the scale and you've got 9 here, x equals 9, x equals 10, so the solution's in between 9 and 10. And as you can see, here it is. What this has shown is that for a specific equation, different iteration formulae may give different solutions. Sometimes we find some iteration formulae give no solutions and others give multiple solutions. But this whole topic is numerical methods. So there's no way of actually knowing what's going to give you a solution and what's not until you try it 